I absolutely applaud Australia for what they are doing. A social media ban for everyone is in the national interest. Not just kids under 16. But so basically, kids 16 and under are banned. Wow, this is great. The Australian government has proposed a ban on social media for all citizens under 16, citing the success of recently introduced restrictions on mobile phones in Australian schools. The Prime Minister announced the ban by declaring that it is doing harm to our kids and I'm calling time on it. The American Psycho Psychological Association has found that teens with the highest social media use rate their overall mental health as poor or very poor. Yes, research from the University of Cambridge shows that social media does not mitigate adolescent feelings of loneliness or isolation overall. Rather, reports suggest online exposure can increase the prevalence of suicidal thoughts in the young. We've known for years social media use is related to poor body image, negative self-esteem, and encourages addictive behaviors. Locally, we are confronted with toxic online influencer culture mobilizing kids to harass and abuse their teachers. I personally have seen the increase and rise of abusive kids they're very, almost to the point of acting psychopathic. It's like, for example, places like Roblox, YouTube, um, just in general, they're very abusive. And then you have adults also who are abusive of other people's children. I've seen a lot more of that. But cyberbullying, cyber stalking, catfishing, dogpiling, trolling, deepfake porn, doxing exists as concepts because social media culture has spawned them. So, even so, there are politicians and media voices critical of the government's proposed legislation. I'm one of them. It's not so because I share the politics of perhaps disinformation, curious fringe identities who yearn for unrestricted access to youthful minds. It's because I personally resent only kids under 16 being spared. I think it's in the national interest to ban social media for everybody. <laughs> That's pretty extreme. I say this in this specific wake of reading a piece in The Guardian this week where Sydney psychologist Amanda Gordon explained that the shared Australian end-of-year exhaustion is not, isn't just about overwork or run-up to Christmas social and family anxiety or cost-of-living pressures and economic stretch. Concurrent to these eternal adult challenges we're living with a relentless bombardment of provocative social media born bad news draining our emotional capacity to navigate everything else i have to say that youtube is extremely becoming more dangerous i don't know if it's just because the ceo the new ceo and it just so happens that there is rising this last year rising of dangerous propagandists. We're talking foreign media outlets who are propagandizing the public. They're emphasizers with countries and groups that America considers being terrorists and enemies and a danger to the world. Russia empathizers and they are being extremely abusive to Republicans or anyone who disagrees with these foreigners' opinion and empathizing with Putin or Russia or hating of Israel, anti-Semitism. I mean, we have dangerous people on YouTube that are spreading outright outlandish propaganda and presenting it as fact or just very in very um, brainwashing-like um, titles on their videos. Very, very deceptive, misleading. And then you have the ads that are absolutely 
catfishing for data of people. So, for example, oh, you're going to get a card, a health card, you're going to get $1,000 from the government, and then, of course, you click on it, and then it takes you to third-party sites where they collect your data. Then you have streams like free Robux for every viewer, stay in the stream, stay in the stream, and then they give you, they'll, like, give you a link, uh, where you're going to get free Robux, and then you click on the link, and all they do is take your data. I mean, you have very seriously dangerous things happening, abuse of minors on on YouTube. Then you have, they won't allow kids to talk or have comments on their videos if you're under 13, but you let kids stay up all night on the internet and take their money or they're giving super chats with no parental controls of their phones to control purchases on YouTube. I mean, it's just so exploiting. I could just list in so many things that's happening on the internet in various places. Um, but there are more and more lawsuits against social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Google, YouTube, I mean, in various countries, not just America. And so this is a ban of any kid under 16 from social media, right? So, and and then France has got seven families suing um, various corporations. It's just... It's increasing. Then you have Florida passed a law where um, 13 and under cannot be on social media. Facebook has um, basically have to be 13 to sign up. YouTube, they don't care what you age. You could be four years old. They don't care. And then while they don't let you have comments on little kids' channels, uh, they let little kids in all, you know, comment in other people's live streams and other people's channels, and it's just, anyways, it's a mess. And so this is, this is, this is going, you're going to see this more and more. More countries are doing this. Meanwhile, this was just reported, whereas this has been ongoing, Department of Justice is seeking the forced sale of Google Chrome and other big changes at Google because they're a monopoly. And not only are they a monopoly, they're an illegal monopoly. The Justice Department is seeking to force Google to sell off its Chrome browser and make other major changes to remedy its illegal search monopoly, prosecutors told a Washington court Wednesday, setting a marker in the landmark case before the incoming Trump administration makes its own determinations about how to proceed. And I want to thank everybody on this platform and others, because I'm going to share this video in various places, um, who contacted their legislators, and I've personally been contacting is any way that I can, the Republicans, the, the Trump family, and let them know every single time or the different examples of how Google was being so biased to Republicans. And I know there's a lot of people complaining about this. There's a lot of discussion about this. And I have been monitoring and collecting data of how, in fact, they have been attacking Republican channels, um, deleting Republicans' comments, just targeting Republicans, being very biased on posts. Yeah. So, I do believe the Trump told Bloomberg editor Chief John Micklewaite that he says China is afraid of Google. But he also complained about all that there were more bad stories than good stories shown up about himself. And I did do videos of that and showed how everything was Biden, 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 Biden. And not only that, but when he was, there was an attempted assassination on his life, there were many thousands of people complaining how they were, YouTube was aggressively controlling the conversation. 
anything Republican, anything Trump. They are extremely aggressive in attacking Republicans, controlling the conversation. And they are going to be accountable. That is going to happen. Right now they're focusing on Google, but there is a lot of activity on YouTube. And they're dealing with them. There are lawsuits against YouTube. They're dealing with them. But it's mostly the minors. But, the, oh, it's coming. All Everything that they've done and continue to do. And all of these channels that are spreading misleading propaganda to the public. YouTube is so bad. It's so bad about people just, just accept anything like it's said to them. They just love to jump on the, like, critical train. And they don't fact check. They don't look behind the curtain. And right now, all this propaganda, this sympathizing with Putin, horrible. I mean, listen, our generals and our leaders advise our presidents on what actions to take in the war. I know there's a lot of ignorance in our society, and I'm not trying to be mean. But they don't understand how actions get decided on that presidents take. It's not the president's call. I know, and partly that is because politicians will say they're going to do this and that. But really and truly, when they get in that office, and this includes Trump, includes Obama, includes the Bush, includes the Clintons, any and every president's ever that we've ever gone to war, it's not a president's act. One is bipartisan because generals are bipartisan. Congress is bipartisan. And it's not the president's call. You have a lot of, um, you've got NATO, you've got uh, the military generals, the intel that is knows things that we don't get to know because it's not, it's not classified. They get into the war room and they have discussions and they decide together on what actions they're going to take. And so Biden didn't make the decision to uh, support uh, Ukraine after two years of being slaughtered, invaded, and attacked to fight back. This is a very large amount of people and countries together that said, look, this is getting really dangerous, and it's not just about Ukraine. You have those nuclear sites you have a lot of resources there you have him trying to get closer to the border of europe you've got nuclear threats against european countries against the united states you have allying up with other countries that are terroristic threats to us and then you have youtube propagandizing and literally spreading misinformation via their channels that are sub just basically supportive of countries that the United States declares are enemies of our land. And so you have prosecution of people who have basically, um, you have the FBI getting involved with controlling lies about things that Biden was doing and claiming it's coming from Russia. But meanwhile, you've got YouTube spreading all kinds of lies about pretty much any president and just sympathizing with enemies that are extremely harmful and literally threatening the world with nukes. And it's extremely dangerous to have the amount of people that view on YouTube for YouTube to be allowed to do this. And then attack Republicans or attack anybody who's basically trying to expose with proof what the things that they're saying is not true. And, and in polite, non-abusive ways, they're targeting people. So Google, having been such a monopoly, they have built themselves up. This is what they are. Okay? And it's not just that they have this monopoly. It's about, it's global. Right? They're just too big for their bridges. And so, yeah, they're getting broke up. That's going to happen. A second Justice Department antitrust case against Google revolves around its dominance of the online advertising market is also underway, with closing arguments to take place Monday. 
at a courthouse in Alexandria, and a judgment is expected next year. So there's just case after case after case, suit after suit after suit, now even prosecutions. Ahead of the filing, Leanne Mulholland, Google's Vice President of Regulatory Affairs, called the Justice Department's court request for remedies in in the search case a radical agenda. Of course they do. They're very anti-American, but just wait until the propaganda cases come out, because that's going to happen. Okay, that is definitely going to happen.